Facebook simplifies its ad targeting to an almost comical degree. Brave says bye 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 to Bing. Snapchat is slipping in revenue and ad free streaming services are having trouble keeping up with free services that have ads. Hello, my SEOs. My name is Kiko and do me a favor and hit that like button so we can talk about those stories here today on This Week in SEO News. Brought to you by PosiRank.com. In a move that can only be described as questionable, Meta Ads has updated its location targeting settings, removing the previous four options and leaving only the living in or recently in location option. Sounds really creepy. This option has been rolled out so quietly that one would almost assume that the overspending bug that happened last week could have been a marketing ploy. Like when Pepsi launched Pepsi Clear. With no exceptions for campaign objectives or optimization, advertisers must now adopt to a new world where location is everything or nothing at all. Kind of like the Schrodinger's cat theory of campaign optimization. By the way, if you knew that reference, congratulations on your semester of psychology. And if you didn't, do not Google that. Just know that it's spot on and some things you just can't forget from college. <laughs> Next up, Brave Search said goodbye and is cutting ties with Bing and relying solely on its own index. Brave is choosing to run its own show as concerns about privacy and control become an issue when concerning AI. As Brave takes complete control over its search engine, it plans to launch Brave Search API and offer both ad-supported and paid free versions. This focus on user control and transparency has been what has set Brave apart from other search engines. So you could see why they would want to cut ties. Some could say they made a brave move. <laughs> okay, I'll see myself out. And Snapchat better come up with a good filter soon because Snap's quarter one revenue fell 7% year over year to 989 million, marking the first ever quarterly revenue drop for the company since going public in 2017. Despite this, daily active users grew 15% year over year to 383 million, and Snapchat's paid tier reached over 3 million users. Snap has been focusing on community growth, revenue growth, and augmented reality with initiatives such as its TikTok competitor, Spotlight, which reached 350 million average monthly active users, a 46% year over year increase. However, not everything is rosy and its AI-powered chatbot, MyAI, has seen mixed success, with some users complaining about its invasiveness. Meanwhile, Snap's augmented reality enterprise service platform for brands shows promise for the company's future. Honestly, I don't know why they did an AI bot. It just made no sense to do Snapchat. But the filters are cool. I like the dog ears. And on another sad note, the golden age of big spending streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus might be coming to an end as the fastest growing segment of streaming business now belongs to free ad-supported platforms like Tubi, Pluto, and the Roku channel. Really? People are still using the Roku channel? With more users seeking cheaper entertainment and studios exploring better monetization, these platforms have amassed large content libraries and millions of users. These services that have spent their time focusing on user engagement and offering quick access to content without needing to log in or subscriptions have seen steady growth compared to their paid competitors. And while these platforms may not generate huge hits, their growth in advertising-based model has led some sponsors to put their money back into the old model of commercials. So technically that means we're going back to the future with this one. It's dumb. And if we come up with a rotary dial iPhone, I'm gonna just lose it. In any event, that's all the news I have for you today. Let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Till next time, my name is Kiko. Have a great day.